Okay, greetings everyone once again. My name is Dmitry and I am the portfolio manager, trader, and together with the BitsGap team, we are working on the automated trading optimization. And today we have a very interesting agenda. So as you can see, there are several topics that we will cover today. First of all, I will tell you exactly what are the optimal strategies and configuration settings for automated trading to beat the market. I will also provide you with new use cases and practical tips. We will also discover the uh, advantages of demo trading, which is absolutely risk-free for you to trade and to optimize your trading strategies or even to discover new ones. We will cover risk management in automated trading and we will also highlight key uh, sources of trade ideas and backtesting is one of them. So you will know exactly what backtesting is all about and how you can use it. Secondly, uh, no, actually it's not the second one, it's already the sixth point. Yeah, it's uh, profit maximization techniques used in automated trading on the upside and on the sideways markets. I will also provide you with examples and key differences between the Asbot and the Scalper bot that we have at BitGap. And we will also talk about the performance transparency. So how you can use your data to uh, find concrete mistakes to avoid in the future and your key strength that you can enhance further. And finally, the logic behind all of our bots, grid mechanism. So you will know exactly what this is all about. So we will start with the high frequency trading. So what is high frequency trading? Uh, it is an automated trading platform. I mean, technique, strategy that uh, uses powerful computers like computation power to execute trades with an extremely high speed. So here's the example. That's an example directly from the bits gap. And these are some of the bots. And you see that there is a transaction amount. So for instance, BTC trading to USDT, there was a total of 319 transactions orders executions in just two days. So in other cases, for instance, Bitcash, Bitcoin Cash trading to uh, USDT, there were around 2,600 trades within just one month. So if we calculate, if we divide all transactions by an hourly rate, so we will have five trades for BC and five trades for NG, each other. So each other 24 seven, the bot is executing orders accordingly with the market swings. And on the chart above, you can see the amount of trades that occurred during this period. Uh, to be more precise, that's the Bitcoin cash to USDT chart. So each red circle represents the sell order and each green circle represents the buy order. And notice the intensity. So you see the amount, which is insane, insane amount of trades within a period of time. And manually, you wouldn't be able to make that many trades as the automated trading bots with a built-in mechanism of high frequency can do. So here is another visualization of the high frequency trading. So here you see that the bot is constantly buying low and selling high. And by doing this, it accumulates the profit for you. So you are basically doing nothing here. You only let the bot to do the job for you. And it's only enough for you to monitor the market and you don't have to disturb the automated trading. Automated trading is absolutely emotionless. 
So it's careless about the, uh, uh, like the FOMO, uh, some other news that are happening on the market. It's careless about uh, the people that might be trading with you, that can influence your decisions. It's just motionless. So it sticks to a concrete plan to execute the trades. So tell me how many of you are well aware of the high frequency trading or ever heard of this? Let's see how many of you are using automated trading strategies and if you are complete uh, beginners in this sphere. So yeah, tell me. Tell me about your experience and then we will proceed with the presentation. Okay, I see that some of you are really experienced. That's great, yeah. Some just started, okay. Yeah, that's great. Okay, so any experience is experience and indeed I would recommend you to at least try high frequency trading to see what the benefits it brings and what are the key advantages. Now we proceed with the algorithm, the algorithm which is built in the Beatscap automated bots and simply it's the grid mechanism. The idea is that um, the system, the automated trading bots, they simultaneously and proportionately uh, set buy and sell limit orders like this. So the green side is the sell order side. So these are all, all of your sell limit orders. And below is the green side, which is the buy limit order side. These are all of your buy limits right here. And the grid itself is nothing more than just a level. It's a, if you have, let's say, 60 grids, that means that you have 60 limit orders in total. So that can be uh, both buy limit orders and sell limit orders. And you can play either way with this. So you can only have, let's say, the red side, so only sell limit orders. Or you can only have the green side, which is only buy limit orders in this case. But for the sake of this example, we're going to use a proportionate and almost equal distribution of both sell and buy limit orders. And as you can see, here's the example with uh, 228 USDT, which is proportionately distributed. So that's 112 USDT in buy limit orders. So that's the amount of USDT that will be used to buy the base currency. In this case, it's Cardano, so that's ADA. And as you have sell limit orders, right here. That means that you must possess uh, a required amount. So that means you have you must have enough of the base currency, which is ADA, to execute, to place all of these sell limit orders. So all of these sell and buy limit orders, you place in a defined trading range. So what is the trading range? The trading range is the is the area uh, within which all of your orders are executed. So if you are not using the trading up function, which I will specify a little bit later. So if you are not using this feature, that means that the bot is going to trade only within a defined trading range like here. So for the sake of the example, we're going to use only eight grid levels. So that means eight levels. Proportionately, we will have four sell limit orders and four buy limit orders. So as the price is constantly moving upwards or downwards, it will trigger either the sell limit or the buy limit order. So if it triggers the sell limit order, then in this case, the automated trading bot will place a buy limit order maintaining the grid spacing. So that's another term that you have to keep in mind. The grid spacing is the, is the distance 
is the space between all of your orders. So here's the example. You see that the price has triggered the buy limit order. And as it triggered the buy limit order, it placed new sell limit order right above the price, maintaining the grid spacing. And then the price keeps moving upwards, downwards, and you see that it triggers new level levels, it triggers new limit orders, and if it triggers buy limit, then in this case it's going to place new sell limit order, and that's the idea. All right. And as I already mentioned, you can have only sell side if you don't want to have a buy side. So if you only have a sell side, that means that you place only sell limit orders. And if the first, like in this example, if you see that the order was triggered as the price moved upwards, a consequent uh, buy limit order is placed right below the price, maintaining the grid spacing. So yeah, now let's talk about the optimal strategies and we will cover what is the training app is all about. It's the feature that we have to provide to other users and the stop loss feature. Let's go to the Bitscap main page. So here you open bot section <clears throat> and as you can see, I already have some of the active bots currently working on me. So I allocated some of my investments so that the bot would make profits for me. And here on the right side, there is a panel. It says simple and advanced. So I prefer using advanced because it has more specification. It tells me exactly uh, how proportionately my investment will be allocated like this. So let's open Ion Trading to, no, actually I already have Ion Trading to USDT. So I'm gonna use another one, let's say Icon Trading to USDT. So that's the right bottom panel that I have on Bitscap page. And here you can see that I have strategies, all right? So some of the strategies are recommended and I will specify what this is all about a little bit later. So stay tuned with me. And here I also have my balance. So I clicked on the icon trading to USDT and here I can set my lower price, which is the bottom limit of my trading range. And I can set the upper price, which is going to be the uh, upper limit of my trading range. So I can do this manually. All right. So I can put, let's say 34 and same with the bottom line. I can put, let's say 0 0.24. Okay, let, let it be, uh, let it be 18, no, 19, okay. But uh, in reality, like in most cases, when I have to act very quickly because the market is quite volatile, I'm gonna use the adjustments on the chart. So that's something that only Bitsgap currently has to offer in comparison with other platforms like free commerce, for instance, or bit universe or crypto hopper so you can adjust the trading range on the chart so you don't have to waste much of your time on manual setups all right so you can do like this so you see i'm plotting my limit price in any direction i want if i don't want to have the buy limits i can do this adjustment so now you see i only have sell orders here and that's exactly the amount of icons that i have to possess on my balance to initiate the trade but let's come back to the first setup in which i had buy limit orders with sell limit orders here i can adjust the grid quantity and as you remember it represents the amount of limit orders all right so here I have 113 grid in total. So that's 113 limit orders. And the grid spacing between them is gonna be 0 0.17. So if you zoom out the chart, you see that there is a space. So that's approximately around 
0 0.17. But uh, here's another advantage of BizGap. We take into account the fee because for in the initiation of each trade, I mean, if you open it, if you buy something and then you sell it, uh, that means that each time you buy or sell something, you have to pay the fee to the exchange, all right? So we have this fee priced in, in this spacing. So you don't have to worry about the fees because all of your profits are net of all fees. So we calculate the fee for you and then we deduct it from the profit. So the profit that you have here, which is bot profit and the investment change is net of all fees. So that's your pure profit, all right? You don't have to waste your time on fees, calculations as you would do in free commerce or bit universe. So here you have a completely pure profit. So now as you see, I have 113 grid levels in total. I can adjust it. I can use these small support buttons so I can put less grid levels or I can have more of grid levels. And as you can see, each time I adjust the grid quantity, the total investment amount required to initiate the bot adjusts accordingly. So as I'm minimizing the amount of grid levels, you see that the investment value is also decreasing. And the grid spacing in this case it increases because when i decrease the amount of grid levels that means that i'm widening the spacing between my grid levels and as i have more grid levels now that means my uh that my setup is more narrow so my limit orders are narrowly distributed so the more grid levels I have, the more chances I have to seize every market swing, like every possible market swing. So you see the price is constantly fluctuating. All right. So that means that the more narrow setup I have, the more chances I have to seize all of these market swings. Here I can also adjust the amount of value. So let's say I want... $2,000 in total. So let me adjust the quantity. Yeah. Actually, let's, let's, first of all, you have to make sure that you have enough of the USDT on your balance. So it looks like I don't have enough of the USDT on my balance. And that means that if I want to continue with this particular trade, I have to make some adjustments. So it, it means that I either have to close some of my active bots or if I have some trades on my trading account, that means I, I should close them. Or if I have some limit orders, I have to postpone them. So I would have enough of the USDT to initiate the trade. All right. And here you can also choose the strategy. We have three strategies, which is as bot it's a high efficiency bot and its idea is to generate maximized return within the investment limit. So if you want to read more, just click on the read more and you will get more specifications. So with the implementation of the as bot which is our brand new product, we have uh, grid spacing reduced from, it was previously 0 0.2, and with the implementation of SBOT, we now have it, like the minimum you can have is 0 0.10. So we minimized it by twice. You can also set a higher amount of grid levels. So now you can have 200 grid levels in total. So thanks to the implementation of the SBOT, new changes finally happened. And we also have the classic bot, which is the original one. And we use the classic one to uh, develop new automated trading bots. And the scalper, it's currently in the beta mode. Uh, sorry, beta mode. And I will come back to this topic, scalper, a little bit later. So once again, stay tuned with me. Now let's come back to the presentation and continue speaking of the optimal strategies. 
So we're going to use this example. In this example, I have BNB trading to USDT. It is the SBOT, so I'm trading using SBOT. I have the greens quantity of 28 levels in total. The investment value is 322. So yeah, as the strategy is as bought as I mentioned, and the trading up function is on. Notice that for each trade, I must take into account the exchange's specification. So that's the cryptocurrency trading on Binance, that's BNB. And the minimum order size for the BNB is 10 USDT, all right? So that's why at Beats Gap, some cryptocurrency pairs, they require less amount of money than others. So you have to take this into account. So that's the setup that I currently have on my active account. So if I click on the right side here uh, on my avatar, I can switch off the demo mode. And now, now I can see my real account. And as you can see, I have BNB trading to USDT here. And with current setup, you see, uh, I have four or actually five, yeah, five settlement orders and uh, 23, I guess, buy limit orders. So in this case, my mistake was that I used not enough of the grid levels to capture all of the market swings that occurred on this upside momentum. So I got stuck with my buy limit orders below the price. So that means that if I click on the view button, I have currently only 3.5 BNBs in orders and 265 USDT in buy limit orders. So that's the disproportionate situation right now. So that means that my USDT currently accounts for more than 80%. So that means that I missed some of the uh, upside momentum just because I didn't have enough of the grid levels to capture all of the possible price that swings. And that can happen, all right? So that depends on the cryptocurrency pair. And what would uh, I recommend you to do to avoid this mistake? So I would basically increase the total grid amount by maybe two and uh, two and a half times. So let's say 70 for this setup would be enough for me to capture like the mo like the majority of the price swings that I occurred within this trading range. All right. And as I have the trailing up function on, that means that my price, I mean, my trading range, the trading range to remind you is defined by the upper limit price and the lower limit price. So with trading up function on, I have my trading range moving uh, in, in the tandem, I mean, together with the price appreciation. So as the price is moving upwards, so does my trading range, all right? So here for BNB trading to USDT, I have the upper limit around 16, all right? And the bottom limit around 15. Now the price is much higher, it's 16.37. And as you can see, my automated trade bot, as bot, keeps trading here because I have a trading up function on and that means my trading range is moving together with the price. So that means that I don't miss, I mean, I don't skip the appreciation. So if I didn't have the trading up function on, I would stuck in the trading range that I predefined initially. All right, so that's something for you to keep in mind. Another example, it's BDC trading to USDT. And this time I had 60 grid levels. I had total value investment of 700. I used the SBOT high frequency trading strategy here with the trading up function on. And 
I also took into account the required size to initiate the bot. And depending on the cryptocurrency exchange, these specifications can vary significantly. So here you can see that I had in total 308 uh, transactions, trades that occurred on this upside momentum. But still, it was not enough for BTC uh, to capture the majority of the price swings. All right. So here, same as the, with BNB, I got stuck with the plentiful amount of buy limit orders below the price. All right. So that means that my grid setup was not uh, narrow enough to capture the price swings. And here the conclusion is pretty much the same. I should have increased like next time when I'm going to trade BTC to USDT, I'm going to use approximately around 110. So that's the minimum for me, the prerequisite for the next time the grid quantity to use. You can use uh, 150, but to do that, you must have enough of the uh, of the balance of the available capital on your account. All right. Another one, it's energy trading to be busy with these settings. This time, uh, my strategy was optimal enough to capture the majority of the price swings as I had enough of the grid levels. And currently, uh, I'm in this situation when I have an equal proportionate distribution of my assets so that I have 0 0.11 BTC in buy limit orders. And out of my total investment, which is 0 0.22, I have other 50% in sell limit orders. So that means I have a pretty much proportionate and equal market participation. So I am sizing enough of the market swings to profit on it. And as you can see, the bot has managed to accumulate 0 0.024 BTC during this period. And the total investment change which takes into account the value change is 17%. So once again, the bot profit stands for the amount of uh, quote currency generated by the bot. So the idea is like for the bot, its algorithm is optimized to generate profits in the quote currency, in this case, BTC, regardless of the market direction. So it can make money for you on the upside, on the downside, and on the sideways markets. And the, the reason of why I have a higher total investment change is that, as you can see on the chart, the price has significantly appreciated. So not only I was affected by the additional value that the board has generated for me in BTC profit, I had a value appreciation as the price was moving upwards. So what are the sources of trade ideas. So where can we find uh, and generate trade ideas? So at BitsGap, as I already uh, emphasized for you, we have recommended strategies. And these recommended strategies are based on the volatility and the risk return ratio. So as you can see, here's the list and the majority of of the recommended strategies, they have a relatively high uh, high uh, return rate for the last month, all right? And based on these recommendations, you can generate trades. Here, here's how you can do this. So we come back to the BitsGap page, and here we open this strategies panel, and this time we have uh, these concrete cryptocurrency pairs to use. So it's ARPA trading to USDT, the first one that pops out in the recommended strategies. 
Once I click on it, I have a recommended setup. So it's 168 uh, grid levels in total with this precise trading range. <clears throat> so as you can see, the, the market was moving upwards. And if we remove all of the grid levels, just to make a clear chart, you can see that if we apply some of the technical analysis, you can clearly see that the price was respecting and uh, it was respecting the support level and it, all of them were quite sustainable so that the price each time it uh, moved towards the support level it bounced off this level so here's the example of the bounce off here's the, another example the third one the fourth one and now we are approaching the next one so you might consider entering the market right now so that would be an example of how you can initiate the trade right now another source of ideas is backtesting so what is backtesting well backtesting is the key component of automated trading structuring and the trader to simulate a trading strategy using historical data to generate results and to analyze risk and profitability before risking any actual capital. So in other words, backtesting discovers how the bot would play out using uh, historical data. And if backtesting works for you, then with the confidence you can employ it so here's the example, uh, it's NG coin trading to Bitcoin. And I took the period from the 13th of April till the 13th of May. And here you can see that there was an upside momentum of approximately 66% starting from the 13th of May, sorry, April. And right until the very top of the price moment here and then there was a consequent drop down approximately 34 percent and during this period the back testing if i would uh, use the bot starting from that period of time the bot would generate 34 percent in in btc all right and Another example is Binance coin trading to BUSD, which is a stable coin. <clears throat> Here, the upside momentum was 35%, and the downside, the consequent dropdown, was 23%. And within this period, the, the uh, bot would generate approximately 13% in, uh, in, BUSD, in BUSD coin in the quote currency. And that's the exactly the representation of all of the trades that would have occurred during this period of time. Uh, so yeah, uh, you can use backtesting to generate trade ideas. So now to sum up, we have NG to BTC and it has generated 34% and BNB trading to BUSD, it has generated 13%. So if we put all the data together to compare, you can see that the difference between the two is 21%. So the NG coin generated almost three times more profit than BNB, but at the same time, it has a slightly higher downside risk volatility in this case, and it was higher by approximately 11%. So this trade would be profitable I mean, in comparison with the BNB, but it would be more riskier. It would be more volatile in comparison with BNB. And it comes to the dilemma for you. So either you are looking for extreme gains 
and you are careless about the risk, or you have a risk tolerance in a way that you are looking for minimized risk for a, for a quite reasonable return. So if we take the bot profit and divide it by the downside risk, that means for NG, 34 divided by 34 would be one. So that's one to one ratio. So basically for 1% for of the profit, uh, you have 1% risk. And if you divide the bot profit generated by BNB and divide it by the downside risk, that means that you had a slightly higher risk for a given return rate. So in terms of risk to return ratio, NG looks uh, advantageous in this case. It, it's, re it's relatively better than BNB. But you have to keep in mind that despite the fact that it had a slightly higher return, it also had a slightly higher risk. So that's how you can use the backtesting to compare cryptocurrencies to find the best one for you, which offers an optimal risk to return ratio. Um, so what is the trading guide in this case? So first of all, you have to choose the ticker. And to choose the ticker, as I've said, you can use the recommended strategies. You can use backtesting. And in order to use the backtesting, simply go to the advanced section, click on show backtesting results. And here you can choose the date range of your interest. Let's say I want to see uh, what would the bot generate for me from the 1st of May till the 14th of May. So in this case, that would be, okay, let's give him some time to calculate the return. Yeah, so that would be 10% approximately for this 14 days period. And you can see that within this time period, there would be 22,000 in total of completed orders. So that's what I was talking about, about the, the amount of trades, that's what we call high frequency trading. And here you can see at which price, what amount it would use to buy and sell. Here is also the annual return. So if you, let's say, initiate the bot today, and then you come back to BitGap page, one year later, you can expect approximately this return if you have proper uh, configuration and settings if you use the trading up function if you use the stop loss so that always significantly affects the total return that you will generate um, right after that you choose the bot and here i have as bot classic bot and scalper so with Asbot, as I mentioned, you have a total grid quantity of 200. Grid spacing, the minimum is 0 0.1. And it also has some other features, like it avoids extreme volatility situations and extreme pump and dumps. And I have some examples for you to show. Or you can also use the classic bot, the regional one, and you can use the scalper. But currently, the scalper offers only a defined trading range, which you are not able to adjust. And it has a trading up function built in. So that's constantly on. You don't have to switch on the trading up function because it's in the algorithm already. And I will also show you examples of how you can use the scalper. The first step for you is to adjust, is to set the required amount of grid levels for this particular trade. So you saw some of the examples that I provided with BNB in which I said that I didn't have enough of the grid levels to seize all of the market swings. So keep in mind this. Next time I will open this cryptocurrency pair with twice more of the grid levels. So always set 
optimal amount of grid levels. And also make sure that you have enough of the balance to initiate the trade because the more grid levels you have, the more uh, capital is required for you. So some, let's say you have only $1,000 on your account and it may turn out that you can only initiate one bot with the required amount of grid levels uh, because it depends on the cryptocurrency pair. Some require less money, some require more, depending on the minimum trade size, which is defined by the trade exchange. The first step for you is to apply risk management techniques. And we have the stop loss for you to offer, which if you put the stop loss, let's use the example with now trading to USDT. So I'm gonna use the stop loss here. So that means that if the price <clears throat> triggers the this level, 6.85, all of my base currency in this case, it's now, will be sold to USDT. So that's my panic button, all right? So if it triggered, it will sell all of my base currency. So that's the risk management, like basic principle. If you want to avoid further decline, don't want to participate in the price depreciation further, put the stop loss to control your risk, all right? So that's something you always have to keep in mind. And if you want to participate in the upside momentum, if you want to follow the price and you, if you don't want to get stuck somewhere below the price in this trading range, make sure that you have a trading up function on so that your trading range is moving together with the price appreciation. And finally, the fifth step is to monitor your automated trading because, for instance, in my case, BNB trading to USDT, it looks like I should cancel it right now and reopen it with 60 grids or actually 70 grids in total so that I wouldn't skip that many price things, swings that occur during this period of time. And in this case, it was three days and eight hours. So I would generate much more profit if I had a more narrow grid set up. So in this case, consider closing the bot and reopening it with an optimized amount of grid levels. Let's say, let's see, uh, let's take a look on the NG trading to BTC. So it looks pretty much okay. So I have currently only sell limit orders because the price was depreciating from this uh, higher high. And that means that I have only left with sell orders because all of my buy orders were successfully executed on the downside. So as I am still confident in this trade, I am still confident that the price is going to go upwards. I am okay with this situation right now. So I'm going to wait for the price to appreciate further and to initiate all of these sell limit orders to maximize my return. All right. So you don't have to stick to your, I mean, to, to always stay in front of your computer as if you would manually trade you would spend much more time. With automated trading, you just have to monitor it from time to time, let's say maybe one time in a day or maybe three times in a week. Because automated trading, it executes trades for you and you just have to monitor to make sure that current uh, automated trading setup is good enough for the market conditions. So in case of BNB, my setup is not optimal to participate in the price appreciation. So I should close it and reopen with the new one. So I already started uh, speaking of the investment change and bot profit and what makes these two key metrics uh, so important is that 
let's say we have a we have an upside momentum the price is moving upwards and with the automated trading i'm now able to maximize my return as i'm not only having a price appreciation but the bot itself is making profits for me each time buying low and selling high all right so that's the marginal effect here that's the added value that the bot accumulates for me in addition to the value change so the passive hodler in this case would buy the bnb and would and then do nothing about it but the rational investor and trader the active hodler as we call him he would uh, optimize trading in a way that he would let the bot to use the bnb and ethereum to accumulate additional profit for him so that's exactly the effect of profit maximization here it's active investment change so that's the value value change plus the bot profit same e case in in the sideways market the sideways market is nothing more than just a period of stagnation when the price is neither going upwards nor it goes downwards so it's somewhere in between it stays in the neutral zone so the idea is to earn during the stagnation and you can let the bot to do this for you simply launch the bot with optimal settings and the bot will buy low and sell high on every price swing so you don't have to initiate manually all of these trades the bot will do this for you and here are some of the examples of the profit maximization effect here's the upside market i mean the price is appreciating and the bot has managed to accumulate an additional the added value of 6.16 percent to the total value appreciation so the total effect is represented by the investment change it takes into account the value change as the price is moving upwards and it takes into account the additional value the profit in the quote currency usd in this case generated by the bot and the total effect is 14 percent pretty much the same scenario it's BTC trading to euro another one LISC trading to USDT here basically is the same idea you let the bot to accumulate extra profit for you so in this gap we are working on the automation so that means that we are constantly looking for optimized trading strategies and setups possible configurations like training up and some other features like the as bot has as it avoids extreme pump and dump scenarios to automate this all for you so you could play with your strategies so you could optimize in your own way to finally beat the market and to spend less time in front of your monitor so automate trading to to achieve maximize return so what about the security as i mentioned as bot has this option uh, i mean optimization each time almost each time the price has a significant surge uh, as bot avoids such cases so if the bot wouldn't be optimized it would otherwise initiate all of your buy orders at the very top here and then consequently as the price drops to the previous level which is well it looks like by 25 percent or something like that this would negatively affect your uh, trading because when you buy something at the very high price and then the price drops you are having significant losses in this case but in case of the optimization as the one as bot has it avoids extreme pump scenarios 
so it doesn't let you to get stuck at the very top at the price which is unfavorable for you to get stuck in it just makes your trading smooth like this so that's what we are looking for we are looking for secure trading and that's something that we are now able to offer you we've been working on this for the last three months and now we are able to uh, avoid in many cases such extreme pump and dump scenarios another key feature that we have to also mention is demo trading so the idea of demo trading is to allow you to use virtual money to optimize your own trading and even to discover new strategies so here i have at the right side demo mode and when i click on it you see that i now switch to my demo account on which i have this amount of money and i can use this amount of money to to play with and to optimize so that's the way for you to make sure that let's say for btc trading to usdt you have enough of the grid levels to 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 to, to seize all of the possible market swings to participate in the participation effect effectively so it looks like it's not enough so as you have virtual money it's absolutely risk-free for you to close the bot and to open another one so i would use let's say as bot trading to btc usdt but this time i will have 183 of grid levels I would also reduce, no, actually I would reduce it to 60 so that my grid spacing is, it meets minimum requirements. It also tells me that I have must have enough of the USDT to initiate the trade. And I also must have enough of the BTC to initiate the trade. So it looks like currently I don't have enough of the uh, USDT to initiate the trade. That means that I should minimize it to be 80 no it's still not enough so what i would do i would close ion trading to usdt now i have enough of the usdt i can even put 120 all right so if i click on start the bot it will tell me that you must buy this amount of btc simply because i don't have it on my uh, balance right now but it needs this amount of btc so that all of my buy limit orders uh, could be placed proportionately so i click on yes buy and it will buy this amount of btc at the market price to set all of the limit orders both buy and sell limit orders accordingly <clears throat> So now it looks like I have way more chances to, to profit on every possible market swing as my grid spacing is now is optimal and I have more grid levels. So that means I have now more chances to, to say is the market swing. Now let's use some other examples like data, for instance, data trading to uh, BTC. And I will show you what I would do right now if I was about to enter the trade. So it looks like the market is moving sideways within this trade range. And it, it looks like it su uh, supports, I mean, it, uh, sust it sustains the support level. This level is quite uh, sustainable. And the price has bounced off this level two times already if we don't take into account some of the downside pressure here in general it respected this level and as you can see it is currently moving towards this support level so you might consider opening 
the trade, the automated trading configuration. So I still, um, I still expect the price to maybe uh, drop even further. So it doesn't mean that it will bounce off the support level precisely. So I take this into account. All right. Actually, it's not exactly this level. It's basically the support zone. So it might drop even further, but I'm pretty much convinced that as the BTC itself is now moving upwards and the data project looks pretty much good. It's pretty much the credible uh, enterprise. So I'm confident that the price is gonna go upwards. So I would consider having a narrow buy zone in case if the price drops further so that the bot would buy data at this price. And I would set a wider sell zone because I expect the price to appreciate. So in order for me to initiate the bot, I now have to just read spacing and read level. So I would say I would put 80. Yeah. And it means that I must have enough of the data on my account to place all of these sell limit orders. So as I have a wider sell zone in comparison with the buy zone, that means that I am, I will be more affected by the value change is a, as if I would be in comparison with a narrow sell site in which I would be required to have less amount of data. But the wider the sell zone, the more of the base currency I must have on my balance. And that means that uh, I am now more affected by the price fluctuation. So yeah, I'm pretty much confident in this setup. I'm gonna place this uh, stop loss just in case if this support level does not stay and the price will break this level. So I want to make sure that my loss is gonna be limited. So I will put the stop loss. And I will also switch the trading up function because I expect the price to go beyond the upper limit. So I expect the price to go way higher. And if I have it, my trading up function on, that means that my price, uh, that my trading range is gonna follow the price appreciation in this case. As now I'm convinced with this setup, I'm gonna press on start the bot. Yes, I was by this amount of data. And finally, you will see your active bot in this section. Just give it some time. Yeah, so finally we are here, we are in the game. And if you want to see your historic results, you can go to the history section. Here you have all of your bots and the only thing that keeps changing is the investment change because when you close the bot, that means that you are left with some of the base currency and quote currency. So make sure that you are aware of that. And once you close the bot, let's say in this case, I have a vet trading to USDT. I have currently, you know, I have nothing left in VIT. I have, let's say, NG. Yes, I have this amount of energy currently stuck in this trade. So if I close the bot, that means that that amount of energy, that was 17,000, it's gonna stay in my balance. So I must keep in mind that I have this amount and that I'm still affected by the price fluctuation. So if I don't want to be affected by the energy price fluctuation, I should go to the trading section, open energy, trading to uh, BTC or USDT and simply sell it. All right, so I want to exit to USDT. I want to sell all of my NG. So I'm gonna use the, the okay market order and sell it. 
So now I'm, I don't have NG at all. And that means that I have now more USDT and that now I'm not affected by the NG price swings. So that's the uh, demo trading, which you can use to optimize your trading and to discover your own trading strategies. And finally, the scalper bot. The scalper bot currently, as I already emphasized, has unadjustable trading configuration. So it has a relatively wider buy zone and a very narrow sell zone. So the optimal scenario for you to use the scalper is when you expect a significant price appreciation. Let's use, uh, let's use data trading to USDT. All right, so Or maybe I can use another one. I'm not satisfied with this chart. Maybe I'm going to use ION trading to use DT. Mm -hmm. okay. For instance, let's say that we are at the point of time when the price was around here. And we saw that the price was respecting the support level and i would enter the trade as i would so a bounce off and a short term price appreciation so i wouldn't enter the trade at the very uh, bottom of the support level i would enter right after the appreciation has occurred which is an additional confirmation for me that the support level has sustained and at this point of time, I would enter the trade with the scalper set up. And I would have an opportunity as uh, in scalper, we have a trading up function on. I would have an opportunity to, to profit on every possible market swing. You see how volatile was the market. And with the scalper set up, with this amount of uh, trades which are very narrowly distributed I would profit on every possible market swing in this case but the drawback currently of this strategy in, in the way it looks now like now you uh, must have enough of the quote currency to initiate the bot and in the coming future we will have we will add the opportunity for you to adjust the scalper bot it's the same as you would do with the S bot. So you will have an opportunity to adjust the trading range and you would be able to use this strategy on some stable coins. Because stable coins, as we know, have a very stable trading range. Let's use uh, TUSD trading to USDT as the idea of each stable coin is to trade I mean is to have the value equal to one dollar the arbitrage here occurs because because of the liquidity and manipulation that are happening on the market sometimes they can go beyond the trading range like it was in the 14th or 13th of March of 2020. You see how much was the manipulation. And in general, it looks like a, a very decent sideways market, which is an endless sideways market, to be honest. And with the scalper setup, you will be able to profit on the sideways. And that that's what I call stable strategy and it's coming in the nearest future so i would suggest you until that time to prepare yourself for the upcoming update so you can use your demo account to trade 
optimize your trading. So you have all of the, the tools here to make your trading as efficient as you want. And if you click on the view button, here you can always, uh, let's, let's use another one, this one. You can always export the data in CSV format in Excel so that in Excel you can do any manipulations that you want. If you want to calculate the sharp ratio, if you want to calculate the total fees that you paid, if you want to calculate uh, some, I don't know, uh, Sartina ratio or, or some uh, other key metrics from the portfolio management, here you go. So you have all of the data right here, which you can use. And you can use this data to spot concrete mistakes to avoid in the future. So that's something for you to keep in mind. Finally, uh, I want to remind you that we are holding a OKEx exclusive tournament. So you can test your skills, you can test your luck in this competition. And for the first place, you can win up to 2,500. So if you are, if you're gonna take place somewhere in between, then you will get a pretty appealing reward. So if you are not trading OKEx, you can read more information or you can connect to OKEx using this uh, guideline. Or if you have OKEx uh, OKEx attached to your account, then you can trade already now. So just click on add OKEx to join if you want to participate. So that's something we are constantly providing to our users. That's the, what I call lucrative activities in which you can compete and test your skills. So you would rather consider uh, joining if you want to, to test yourself. Um, it seems like I've gone through all the topics and provided you with enough of the use cases. And if you want to read more about the classic bot, S bot, and the scalper, then once again, you can click on read more, or you can go to the main, main page and simply follow the about section, click on blog, and here you have relevant articles to read about the scalper bot, about how you can profit on market uncertainty and stagnation, uh, as bought automated trading to maximize your holding. So that's all we have for you. And here you have some use cases in addition to those that I've provided during this webinar and during other webinars. And yeah. Now let's come back to to the chat box and let's see if you have any interesting questions. Mm -hmm. Okay, so some of you are asking about the trading up function once again. Uh, so let's use an example with um, EDC trading to USDT. So I'm just going to draw it for you. Let's do the chart and use some available brushes here. So let's say your trading range is defined by this area. So that's the upper limit and that's the bottom limit. And you have a trading feature on. So that means that as the price moves upwards and it 
triggers, I mean, it touches the uh, upper limit and even goes higher. That's the point at which your trading range is going to start following the price. So that's going to move together with the price. But if the price then depreciates and it breaks the bottom limit, nothing is going to happen with your trading rate. It's going to stay where it stayed the last time the price appreciated. And if the price then comes back again to this level, here is where the trading will continue again as the price keeps moving upwards. And then again, it moves even higher. So again, that's the point <laughs> when the trading range will readjust accordingly with the price depreciation. And that's the new setup that you're gonna have. And if it's gonna trade within this range, the, the, the bot is gonna execute trades accordingly. And then again, it moves upwards like this. And this time again, you have your trading range following the price. So it always follows the price appreciation, but it never follows the downside. So we don't want you to follow the downside. We, only, we want you to follow the upside. So that's the only way for you to maximize the profit. So the optimal scenario is for you to initiate the bot is in the upside and the sideways markets. Basically apply technical analysis and in order to find best points of time of price where you can initiate the bot. So the majority of cryptocurrencies are supporting they are quite, I mean, they respect support levels and they respect resistance levels. So let's say the price is um, approaching uh, like here, key resistance level. All right. So let's say we are now at that point of time. When the price is moving towards the resistance level so at this point do not I, I mean i do not recommend you to enter the trade because there is a high likelihood that the resistance will sustain and the selling pressure will move the price downwards as you can see that occurred here so consider entering the trade from the support level and as you see some of the price appreciation to confirm that the support sustained and consider canceling your trades when the price is approaching key resistance levels because you don't want your uh, trading to be affected by the downside pressure so you're only looking for scenarios when the price is moving upwards so you'd rather consider canceling your trade at this point of time and then re-enter the trade at the point where you see that the support level sustained again all right so in any way the bot will generate profits for you on the upside on the sideways and even on the downside but on the downside, you are significantly affected by the negative value change as the price is depreciating. So you don't want to initiate your trades on the downside markets. You want to initiate your trades when you see that there is a sideways market, all right, and you expect the price further to break the upper limit. So you expect the price appreciation, all right? So that's the optimal scenario for you. And then let's say again, sideways market, you can re-enter here again, and then price appreciates. And always use stop loss in case if this sideways 
does not sustain. Let's say it then falls down, but, but you had here the stop loss. So that would be your risk management here. So yes, you would, you would have some losses, but you have limited losses in this case, which you can later offset by again, initiating the bot with will, that will accumulate profits for you on the sideways and the uptrend markets. So apply diversification. So diversify your trading, diversify your trading with different trading strategies to achieve profit maximization. So that's the idea. Okay, let's see if you have any other questions. Okay, great. I see that Erwin has managed to answer to the vast majority of your questions. And if you have some other questions left, then you can always uh, type them in the support chat that we have on the Bitscap main page. Or you can ask them on the next webinar. So at this point, I'm going to stop the webinar and uh, ask you to, to provide me with your feedback. So please rate this webinar uh, on the scale from 1 to 10. So I would, I would know exactly how you find this webinar useful. And please type your suggestions for the next time because I'm constantly uh, taking into account your recommendations and suggestions and some critical opinions to improve the webinar and its quality because it's quite hard to, uh, to embrace all of the features that we have within just one other webinar. So the idea of the web is to provide you with useful tips and clues and uh, new use cases. So every time you join the webinar, you are guaranteed to have new use cases because we are constantly looking for really useful tips for you to share. And uh, yeah, stay tuned, read the blog, follow us in social networks to stay tuned in case if we will release new updates or if new competitions will be announced like the one that we have at Binance and we've made it to the ninth place. So we, so we were in the top 10 actually, that's why we are constantly now holding new competitions. So this one that we have right now, OKEX, is our local one, which you can try. And then later, as soon as Binance will uh, announce the new one, then together we will be even more prepared to take even higher rank. So we are aiming to take the first place, actually. So let's, let's make it together, guys. And I wish you uh, all the best. Stay safe. Thanks for your feedback. I appreciate your time. Peace and, and love. Have a nice evening.